So what does iron deficiency result in then? So remember the main purpose of iron is to be used in the production of hemoglobin in red blood cells. Red blood cells are created in the bone marrow. If an individual is iron deficient, then one, fewer red blood cells will be made by the bone marrow, and two, the red blood cells that are created will have less hemoglobin than they should have. Red blood cells are always being removed from the bloodstream because they die after 120 days, so the hemoglobin of those red blood cells is also being removed. If the bone marrow is now putting in too few red blood cells and the red blood cells that it is putting in contain too little haemoglobin, then that means that the input of haemoglobin into the bloodstream is going to be lower than the output of haemoglobin out of the bloodstream. And therefore, this is going to result in the concentration of haemoglobin or the amount of haemoglobin in the bloodstream falling and becoming too low. This condition is called anemia. So anemia means too low concentration of haemoglobin, so Hb is short for haemoglobin. And when the anemia is due to iron deficiency, we call that iron deficiency anemia. So the threshold for anemia is slightly different between men and women. So in women, anemia is when the concentration of haemoglobin within the bloodstream is less than 120 grams per litre, whereas in men, it's higher the threshold. It's when the haemoglobin concentration is less than 130 grams per litre. So 100, for instance, would be anemic in both men and women, but 125 would be not anemic in a woman, but would be considered anemic in a man. To put this in context, if we take the example of a young woman with heavy periods, every month when she has her period, she's going to be losing a lot of blood. So she's losing iron in the form of the haemoglobin that is within that blood she's losing. Initially, her bone marrow will work hard and will produce more haemoglobin and red blood cells, and it will use her iron stores in order to supply the iron to do this. If, however, she doesn't get enough iron from her diet to replenish those raided iron stores, then gradually those iron stores are going to get depleted, and eventually the bone marrow won't be able to raid them in order to create more haemoglobin to replace the haemoglobin she's losing when she menstruates. At that point, her bone marrow won't be able to correct for the blood loss, and her haemoglobin will start to become low and stay low. So she'll develop iron deficiency anemia. The story is exactly analogous for the elderly person with colorectal cancer losing blood into the GI tract. Let's also think about the example of a malabsorptive condition. So let's say we have a 30-year-old male with bad Crohn's disease affecting the small bowel. He has no source of blood loss, so the only way in which his body is going to be losing iron is through the shedding of skin cells. So let's say he develops extremely severe Crohn's disease that is going to impair almost all absorption of iron from the small bowel. Without blood loss, it's going to take him a very long time to enter an iron deficient state, but eventually, if the Crohn's disease doesn't get better and the absorption of iron doesn't resume, it will happen. So he'll shed skin cells, new skin cells are continuously being regenerated, and these new skin cells require iron, and they're going to be getting that iron from the iron stores. So if those iron stores aren't being replenished because he can't absorb any iron from his GI tract, then they're gradually going to diminish. Now, it's important to understand that when red blood cells expire and are destroyed and removed from the bloodstream, the iron that's going to be recycled from their haemoglobin, it doesn't go directly back to the bone marrow and immediately get reincorporated into new red blood cells. Instead, it goes back into the iron stores of the body, and then the bone marrow takes the iron from the iron stores. So the bone marrow is reliant upon iron from the iron stores in order to create new red blood cells, new haemoglobin.
So if the iron stores are gradually being depleted in this 30-year-old male, eventually it will get to a low enough level that the bone marrow won't be receiving enough iron from it in order to make an adequate number of red blood cells with an adequate amount of hemoglobin to keep the hemoglobin concentration in the serum at the correct level and therefore it will start to go down and this individual will start to become anemic, indeed iron deficiency anemia. So let's move now on to the symptoms of anemia. So hemoglobin is responsible for delivering oxygen from the lungs to all the tissues of the body. So if its level is low, it's going to lead to inadequate delivery of oxygen to all the tissues of the body. When the brain doesn't get supplied with enough oxygen, this makes you feel tired all the time. So one of the key symptoms of anemia is fatigue. When the muscle tissue doesn't get enough oxygen, that makes all the muscles weak. So weakness, physical weakness all over the, the, the body is another symptom of anemia. Finally, when the tissues of the body don't get delivered enough oxygen, it triggers the sensation of breathlessness. So people with anemia often feel breathless. So these are the three major symptoms of people who are anemic, tiredness, weakness, and feeling breathless. In addition, people who are anemic often look very pale. This is because hemoglobin is responsible for the red color of blood. So when the hemoglobin concentration is too low, the red color becomes less strong. Now in the dermal layer of the skin, which is the layer just underneath the epidermis, the outer layer, there are lots of small blood vessels which contain red blood cells and haemoglobin. And the redness of the haemoglobin in these blood vessels contributes to the normal colour of the skin. So if that redness is decreased, it leads to the skin appearing paler. So how do we diagnose anemia then? So we diagnose anemia by doing a blood test and measuring the haemoglobin concentration. And as we said earlier, if it's below 120 grams per litre, that's considered anemic in women. And if it's below 130 grams per litre, that's considered anemic in men. So if anyone comes to us for our help, complaining of problems with feeling tired all the time or feeling weak all over or feeling breathless, one of the tests we're always going to do is to measure their haemoglobin concentration and see if they're anemic or not, especially if they're pale. So if we find that the person is anemic, how do we know that that anemia is due to iron deficiency? Because there are a lot of other problems that can cause anemia. So there are other things that we look at to give us clues. So when we measure someone's serum haemoglobin concentration, other tests that are done at the same time are to measure the size of the red blood cells, which we call the MCV, the mean cell volume. So this is the volume of the individual red blood cells. Now, in people with iron deficiency, the bone marrow starts producing red blood cells that contain less haemoglobin. And these red blood cells that have less haemoglobin within them, they end up having a smaller volume as well. So you end up with small red blood cells classically in iron deficiency anemia. So the normal mean cell volume for red blood cells is between 80 and 100 femtoliters. If the number that you get for the individual is less than 80, or if it's to the lower end of this range, so uh, maybe 82, you would suspect that that is anemia due to iron deficiency. And when we have an anemia in where the red blood cells are all too small, we have a special name for that. We call it a microcytic anemia. So microcytic just means the cells are too small. The other thing the lab always does whenever we measure a serum haemoglobin level is it also works out how much haemoglobin each of the red blood cells has within them. Uh, and it works out a mean of this for loads of different red blood cells. And this is called the MCH, the mean cell haemoglobin. So normally this is between 27 and 32 picograms of haemoglobin in each red blood cell. Now in iron deficient states, we discussed that the bone marrow is going to produce these red blood cells that contain less haemoglobin. And therefore in iron deficiency anemia, you can expect to see a low mean cell haemoglobin. So overall, if you've got a patient who is anemic and they're red blood cells are too small and their red blood cells contain too little haemoglobin, that is highly suggestive that the cause of this anemia is due to iron deficiency. Now there is another blood test that you can do to prove that the individual is iron deficient and this is called ferritin. 
So we talked earlier about how the body has an iron store that is mainly within the liver. Now, that iron that is stored within the liver cells, it's not just floating around on its own. Instead, it is all bound very carefully to protein. And the protein that binds and stores iron is called ferritin. So I've drawn here a liver cell, and these little red dots are supposed to represent the ferritin proteins, and each one of these ferritin proteins inside the liver cell is going to have a huge amount of iron bound and stored to it. Now some of these ferritin proteins actually spill out of the liver cells, escape them, and end up in the bloodstream. So there is actually ferritin proteins in the blood, with loads of iron bound to them. Now this is useful because the amount of ferritin proteins in the bloodstream, the concentration of them can be measured and it's actually proportional to the amount of ferritin that's stored in the liver. So the more ferritin is stored within the liver, the higher the body's iron stores, the higher is going to be the ferritin concentration within the bloodstream. Meanwhile, if the ferritin storage in the liver is low, then proportionally the amount in the blood that's spilled into the blood, escapes the liver cells and spilled into the bloodstream, is also going to be low. So they're directly related to one another. And therefore, by measuring the serum ferritin concentration, which we can easily do with a blood test, we can infer what the liver ferritin store is like, and therefore what the body's iron stores are like. So the normal concentration for serum ferritin is between 30 and 300 micrograms per litre. So if you do this blood test and find that the individual's ferritin concentration is less than 30, that is low, and that implies that the amount of ferritin that is stored within their liver is low, and therefore that their body's stores of iron are depleted. And that's an excellent way of confirming that this individual is iron deficient. The caveat to this is that there are loads of situations where the liver can actually release more ferritin into the bloodstream. So ferritin is actually what we call an acute phase reactant. So when you are taken ill by an infection, let's say, let's say you get the flu, really bad uh, upper respiratory tract infection, the liver responds to the infection, it releases loads of proteins that it has synthesized to try and combat the infection, for instance, complement proteins. This hepatic response to infection is called the acute phase reaction. And we call proteins whose level within the bloodstream changes in response to the acute phase reaction, we call those acute phase reactants. So complement proteins are acute phase reactants. CRP that's used all the time clinically to decide whether someone has an infection or not, that's another example of a protein released by the liver in times of crisis, and it's called an acute phase reactant. Now, unfortunately, the liver also releases more ferritin into the bloodstream as part of the acute phase reaction. So ferritin levels within the bloodstream go up as part of the acute phase reactions, we call ferritin an acute phase reactant. So for example, an individual might actually be iron deficient and normally their serum ferritin might, let's say, be 10. However, if they suddenly get the flu, the liver will release lots of ferritin from the, its cells into the bloodstream and therefore the ferritin level will go up in the bloodstream. It might go up to a huge level, it might go up to above this upper threshold of normal, so it might go up to let's say 500. And if you were to do this blood test at the time that the individual had the infection, you would therefore come to the conclusion that the individual wasn't iron deficient, but that would be an incorrect conclusion. So in the context of infection or concurrent illness, you cannot use serum ferritin to infer what the liver's store of iron is like. You can only use this in times where there is no infection or concurrent illness. So be aware that having a normal or high ferritin doesn't necessarily mean that you're not iron deficient. It might just be that you were slightly unwell when you had the blood test done and therefore the ferritin was higher because of the acute phase reaction. So ferritin is very useful in the context where the individual is not unwell apart from the anemia 
and it's very useful when it comes back low because if it comes back low then truly that individual is iron deficient. If it comes back normal you always wonder is it that this individual isn't iron deficient and that's why it's normal or is it that they actually are iron deficient but they've got a mild acute phase reaction going on at the moment that's driven the serum ferritin up. So ferritin has to be interpreted cleverly and a normal ferritin should not rule out the possibility that the individual is iron deficient. If you clinically suspect iron deficiency, i.e. the history is suspicious that the individual might be iron deficient and these other numbers, mean cell volume and mean cell hemoglobin, are suggestive that it's an iron deficiency picture, then you should uh, still consider that iron deficiency is certainly an option and maybe consider treating them. There are further blood tests that you could do in the context of ferritin not managing to prove the diagnosis. However, their interpretation becomes more and more subtle and therefore for the basis of this video, we're going to stop here and move on and discuss about iron tablets.